Well, AI-based creativity is a little bit, uh, you could compare it maybe with uh, how the uh, old masters of the past uh, worked. So for example, think of the Dutch uh, old master uh, Rembrandt. He worked on his artworks, not on his own, but he kind of used this uh, large team of all sorts of uh, assistants who, who helped him in creating his uh, masterworks. And that's also a little bit like uh, working with artificial intelligence. So you're kind of working with a technology that's actually capable of helping with its own sense or a little bit of creativity of its own to actually do hard work for you, to do really work to sweat in creating uh, artworks and all sorts of variations of uh, artworks. That's a little bit about uh, yeah, working with artificial intelligence. Yeah, so in that sense, I agree with you, Rune, that it's not really something uh, new necessarily. Yeah? So, uh, uh, to give another example, uh, David Bowie is also an artist who was known to use tools to create his songs. He had this thing called the Verbicizer, uh, where it would generate, you know, random sequences of words and, and mix them up, uh, a bit like uh, the old cut and, cut and fold uh, technique from the, you know, the beat writers in the yeah, 50s, yeah, yeah, yeah. and use that to, to generate new songs. So I think, uh, yeah, in that sense, it's just uh, an extension of some of these age-old tools. Absolutely. Yeah, I know there's a lot of debate about that, but actually if you think back of what we just spoke about, um, for David Bowie, it didn't really matter whether he was using a tool or not. You know, he just created better output and he's the author. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't see why artists should be so afraid of, of using AI as a collaborative tool to create the output. I agree. And you're still the author. Well, that's a very interesting uh, question. And maybe to go back to the authorship question a little bit, there are actually future scenarios you could think of in which this authorship is actually uh, will be maybe not in our own hands anymore. So Can you give an example, example with our own work? Maybe yeah, so think for example of uh, the project uh, we did Letters from Nature. In this project, we actually used uh, artificial intelligence as this intermediary between uh, nature and uh, humans. So we gave uh, nature through artificial intelligence the possibility to, uh, to give a voice to nature and actually warn and ask for help about uh, climate change to uh, world leaders. And this is of course, in an essence, a conceptual artwork, but it's about this future in which uh, yeah, entities in nature, in anim in animate uh, entities, for example, like these melting ice caps or these drowning islands, actually through AI would have the possibility to uh, create on their own. Yeah, so I mean, uh, what would be then maybe an extreme end vision is that, you know, we connect thousands of those objects and let them generate their own artistic output uh, long after we have left uh, Earth ourselves. And then, yeah, then it really becomes uh, more of an autonomous, uh, autonomous art system. So uh, that might be interesting and we're actually kind of keen to uh, take the first step towards this to, by taking apart our art project and generate new forms of output in different ways so that we can ultimately have uh, uh, nature, uh, well, creating art uh, and we were just uh, the, the people that provided the very first little step. And then it lives, uh, it will continue to live on its own. That would be cool. Sounds like a fascinating future to me. <laughs>